Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session. And this is session on power system in Asia. I'm the chair per, uh, person for this session, Lu Gao, from National Institute for Environment Studies, Japan. So in this session, its uh, presentation is allowed 20 minutes and five, uh, future five minutes available for question and discussion. Okay, the first presentation is about the cost evaluation considering the time shifted electricity demand of electric sector in energy chain model. The speaker is Dr. Yamada. Sure, uh, thank you for our uh, introduction. Uh, can you see my screen and can you hear my voice? Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, so uh, nice to meet you, everyone. I'm very happy to be here to introduce my research to, to all of you. Uh, my research uh, uh, presentation title is uh, Cost Evaluation uh, Considering Time Shifted Electricity Demand of Industrial Sector in Energy Chain Model in Japan. Um, okay, first of all, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, the organization I, I'm working. So uh, I'm working for uh, Central Research Institute of uh, Electric Power Industry. Uh, it is called CREEPY, uh, which is a general incorporated uh, foundation for uh, power industry in Japan. Uh, it is funded by uh, 10 big uh, electric power uh, companies in Japan. So um, CREEP has uh, two centers and eight laboratories here, as here. So I'm working for the first one, uh, Energy Innovation Center. So this is a quick view of power grid in Japan. So uh, I don't want to go detail, go to detail in here, but uh, so we we can see the west side of Japan has a 60 health grid and the east side is a 50 health grid. And each part of uh, each area has a sub part of the transmission line, uh, trans transmission grid. And this is a, a power generation and power supply composition uh, from uh, 2052 to 20, uh, 1952 to 2017. So before uh, 2011, we had uh, some part of nuclear, but after the uh, Fukushima uh, disaster um, in 2011, we have a big part of coal and uh, LNGs. We have a uh, big part of uh, thermal uh, power generations. And this is uh, um, about the PV penetration and duct call. So uh, as the other uh, countries, uh, Japan has uh, a rapid PV penetration in, in 2017, uh, as in the uh, left-hand side so, uh, picture. Uh, we have uh, about 60 gigawatts uh, renewable uh, uh, capacities. And the Japanese government aims to install uh, 64 gigawatt of solar generation capacity and 10 gigawatt wind capacity by uh, 2030. And right hand side is a uh, you know, duck carp uh, in the one of the uh, sub area in Japan. It's the Kyushu Island. So uh, we, we need to uh, deal with uh, somehow. Uh, and another one point is uh, Japanese government raised emission reduction target uh, to uh, from uh, 62% to 46% by 2030, uh, just in the uh, April this year. So this uh, renewable capacity target might be raised uh, in the near future. And this is the uh, uh, balancing market uh, status in Japan. So, uh, balancing market uh, is just established uh, this year. It's uh, cut, uh, cut it for the category of uh, reserve replacement 
replacement process. And after uh, 2024, uh, the FFR, uh, which is uh, the frequency restoration process and FCR, the frequency con containment process, the category uh, will be uh, added to the balancing market. So based on the uh, backgrounds, so uh, my research uh, issue and objectives uh, are shown in the, in the slide. The background is uh, due to the rapid penetration that part is going, going deeper. So in balancing market uh, has established from 2021. And we think uh, large scale demand resources are hopeful for DSR utilization. My research issue is how much impact will DSR have to the whole energy system in Japan in 2030 uh, if they are utilized for uh, demand time shifting. Then my uh, research objective is to incorporate uh, time shifting to uh, industrial uh, electricity demand into the power system model uh, of whole Japan then uh, analyze how it affects the entire Japanese energy system and to evaluate its system costs. So the, as a tool, uh, we use an energy chain model, uh, which is uh, developed by uh, Yamamoto, uh, uh, my co-worker uh, in Korea. It's uh, one of uh, uh, an energy system model for Japan, whole Japan. It's one of a uh, um, uh, linear optimization model and it's uh, for a one region model in Japan. And the uh, quick uh, view of the structure of uh, energy chain model is here. Uh, this model covers uh, from primary energy supply to uh, the energy service demand. So, in, in each process, uh, we can consider the uh, not only electricity but also heat and also the um, energy use. Then, um, calculation assumptions of energy chain model is here. Uh, calculation target year is two thousand thirty, and the. Uh, the cost minimization uh, for the single year. The second point is that the energy service demand is on the, in the uh, target year 2030 is given as the exogenous exo scenario uh, based on the Japanese government. The third point is uh, calculated the cost minimizing energy chain uh, that satisfies the uh, given service demand. The fourth point is for the electricity sector, uh, we consider hourly coincidence of uh, electricity demand and supply and LFC reserve also. The fifth point is the uh, temporal pattern of uh, electricity demand are incorporated as flexible uh, if uh, those uh, technologies are selected under the cost uh, minimization. And so uh, this is an example of uh, DSR, demand side resources uh, for uh, time shifted. But we don't, we don't specify the kinds of DSR because uh, in the near future, uh, we cannot see any type of technology will be installed. So uh, this is just an example of, uh, of the technology. The, First category is uh, industrial demands, uh, such as uh, agricultural pumps, uh, plant factories, or, or industrial robots, uh, data centers, or, or, or electric cars, or forklift. forklift. And the other uh, categories are uh, appliances, uh, such as uh, uh, equipment with batteries, uh, like uh, computer equipment, and drones, and robots. And, and the other one is uh, IoT enabled uh, electrical equipments, uh, such as washing machines or uh, refrigerators, etc. 
So uh, time shifting targets uh, volume uh, as here. So uh, in the uh, electricity usage, uh, we have uh, 8,879 uh, petajoule uh, as uh, in, in 2030, uh, we uh, estimate, as estimated. And 37% is for industry. In the industry in the use service, we have 17 percent for electricity, not for heat. So uh, total uh, 63 percent of total in 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 energy service uh, are, are is our uh, target, and we don't uh, consider all part of. Uh, this uh, can be time shifting, and uh, just a small part of uh, it, it can be time shifted. Uh, I'll uh, mention it later. So uh, this is a potential percentage of industrial demand to be time shifted. So uh, according to the uh, two uh, papers, uh, we said uh, three cases, uh, 1%, 3%, and 10% as uh, uh, time shifted cases. The first, first uh, paper is uh, OR and, uh, and Real Oak Ridge National Laboratories paper. And it says uh, from 2% to 10% uh, can be uh, time shifted in the near future. The second one is Takahashi et al. Uh, paper. Uh, and he's also a, a member of Creepy. And uh, his paper shows uh, three, four, uh, three to four percent, percent of electricity usage uh, can be uh, time shifted in the industry sector. So uh, we said one, three, ten percent of other cases. So uh, I mentioned uh, this slide over here. So we think base case, uh, 1%, 3%, 10%. So this is assumptions. So uh, for our thermal power generation, uh, the cost of power generation and generation efficiency and service line were uh, set based on the uh, Japanese government. The partial load efficiency and LFC reserve uh, also are uh, considered. The second point, PV and wind. The capacity for PV and wind are, uh, I already mentioned, uh, 64 uh, gigawatts for solar and 10, per, uh, 10 gigawatts wind uh, in 2030 uh, is considered. The third point, uh, base load generation and pumped water generations. Uh, also uh, from uh, the uh, outlook from um, Meti and the Japanese government. The fourth point, uh, energy service demand is uh, a proportion distribution. A proportional distribution of uh, energy service demand is based on the uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 2010 years uh, service. Uh, actual. So uh, based on the 2010, uh, we estimate uh, some, per uh, some percentage uh, for 2030. So uh, I'd like to show the results. The first result shows the uh, um, on a day with uh, light electric electricity demand. So uh, you know, this slide shows the industry electricity demand time shift. The left-hand side uh, graph, the gray line shows the uh, base case and red line is for 10% shifted case. So in this um, graph, we can see uh, uh, the, peak in, the peak is increased by 3.8% uh, 
but uh, we can see the um, the usage uh, demand decrease uh, in the evening hour uh, by 10 percent. So in the 10% uh, shifted case, uh, as in the right-hand side graph, the red area is for a shiftable uh, part of the industrial uh, electricity demand. So we can see that some part of the uh, electricity demand are shifted from evening uh, time to, to the other times. Um, this uh, result shows the um, temporal pattern on the day uh, with uh, heavy electricity demand, a high electricity demand, and low PV and wind generation. And it is in on January 12th. And in the uh, left hand side graph, uh, we see the uh, peak, uh, peak cut. Uh, by 7.6% uh, compared to the base case. And, and do, uh, this, uh, this uh, peak cut uh, affects to the LNG -ish combined cycle generation reduction. So in the right hand side, we see a 60, uh, 57, a uh, 50 point. Uh, 5.7% peak cut of LNG CC on that day. And this is um, the, on the same day, uh, residual, residual electricity demand uh, become flatter. So uh, residual electricity demand is calculated uh, from uh, actual electricity demand minus PV generation minus uh, wind generation. So the graph in the, on the below, uh, we see a 62 gigawatt hour per hour uh, as a peak minus minimum uh, for base case. But uh, in 10% time, time shifted case, we see uh, 54. So we see the, uh, the residual electricity demand uh, become flatter. And this slide shows the uh, change in power supply capacity. So regarding the uh, power supply capacity, uh, just LNG combined cycle and lithium ion batteries uh, are decreased. And the other uh, power sources, like nuclear, hydro, coal, uh, as you can see, LNG control, it's pumping, and asphaltic, wind, solar are stable. And as in the graph, uh, we see a base case, the uh, LNGCC has uh, 113 uh, gigawatt capacity, but in the 10% uh, time shifted case, uh, we, we can reduce 61% as a capacity, uh, as operating capacity. In the uh, right hand side, uh, lithium ion battery, we see a, a uh, 3.6% uh, reduction as a capacity from uh, 5.4 gigawatt to 5.2 gigawatts. And this is a change in the total system cost. So uh, total system cost includes all of the uh, energy chain in Japan uh, in that year. So uh, in this, uh, in the base case, uh, it's very big, but um, in 60, uh, 46,000 uh, billion JPY, JPN. But in the 10% uh, time shifted case, uh, we had uh, 46, uh, 190 uh, billion GP yen. And it's, uh, it reduced uh, 
9%. And it's not, not, a, not big uh, reduction uh, as a number. Uh, but we see the, uh, in the reduction uh, portion, we see 20 billion GPY in, in for variable cost. It's a fuel cost. And the 66 uh, billion GPY is for fixed cost. So uh, the portion of fixed cost reduction is bigger than the uh, variable cost. So, uh, so I calculated the effect per kilowatt hour of time shifted demand. So uh, just a uh, um, calculate from the total cost reduction and the amount of uh, time shifted uh, electricity. Then we see the um, total cost of uh, uh, and rate of time, a uh, total cost reduction GPY per kilowatt hour is uh, 5.5 in 10% case. And the, the portion of the variable cost is you know, 2 point, uh, 1.28 uh, GPY per kilowatt hour and 4.22 uh, GPY per kilowatt hour is for uh, fixed cost. So if, if I um, calculate the CO2 reduction emission uh, per kilowatt hour, then uh, 0 0.018 kilogram CO2 per kilogram hour. So uh, I'd like to summary my um, presentation. The first point is uh, if we consider the uh, time shifting of industrial electric electricity usage, then we can see peak reduction of uh, industrial electricity use. Uh, it's normal, but but percentage of the peak car is seven point six percent on the day on a on a heavy electricity usage day, and, and this uh, caused the peak reduction of LNGCC generation on the same day uh, by uh, five point seven percent. Yes. Second point is the uh, potential value of uh, time shifting of industrial electricity usage. The reduction of total co system cost uh, per uh, time shifted kilowatt hour is around 5.5 to 5.7 uh, JPY. And about two thirds uh, of it is for fixed cost reduction and one third is for uh, variable cost reduction. The third point is uh, then uh, how can we think the uh, promotion of time shifting of industrial electricity usage? Then um, the one big idea uh, is to providing some financial incentives to the industrial consumers. Then we can see, uh, we can uh, consider the uh, 50, uh, 5.5 to 5.7 JPY per uh, time shifted kilowatt hour uh, can be regarded as the upper limit of uh, uh, incentive for demand time shifting. Uh, but in reality, uh, we should take into account the operation cost or uh, transmission cost and also market detailing cost and et cetera. So uh, it should be smaller than uh, this number, but uh, it's uh, just a, um, we can see it's a um, upper limit uh, as uh, incentives. So uh, thank you for listening. Uh, that's my presentation. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Tom Tomoyama. It's a very interesting presentation. So now let's open the question and the comments from the audience. Do you have some question? Oh, can I ask a question? Uh, please. Uh, yeah, thank you for 
very interesting topic, uh, Dr. Yamada. It was a really interesting and I think timely um, research topic. Um, my question is, um, I'm not sure whether I lost some point, but you mentioned about the um, balancing market in Japan. So is there some kind of um, pilot style um, like demand response um, electricity market that is considered into Japan already? Um, yeah, um, this is not a pilot. Uh, it's a real uh, establishment of a balancing market. And the, from, the, uh, from 2021, uh, it is focused on, on the uh, reserve replacement for uh, fit uh, the uh, demand for uh, generation forecast era. So uh, it's very slow uh, categories. And, and this is not uh, specified for the um, specified for the uh, demand response. So uh, many generators are uh, participating in uh, these categories. And in the near future, uh, we have uh, FFR and FCR uh, category as a balancing uh, market. And the Japanese, mar uh, Japanese government is going to uh, going to promote the VPPs or uh, aggregators of the demand response uh, in Japan. So uh, in the near future, uh, Japanese government uh, hope or want uh, many uh, demand response resources will be uh, part part uh, will participate in the market. Oh, thank you for your um, kind explanations. And I also had another question related to this uh, result part. Um, I, I saw that as the shifting increased from one to 10%, there seems to be um, less carbon mitigation effect. Mm -hmm. So is that um, some kind of um, portfolio change that caused the um, less emission mitigations coming in? Sorry, um, uh, let me confirm your question. So in this uh, slide, maybe, yeah. mm -hmm. the CO2 emissions are, um, you mentioned it's, it's uh, rather small. Yes, right, right, exactly. Um, yeah, uh, yeah um, in my understanding, uh, it, this model is uh, for, for cost minimization. So, uh, um, for the, um, the LNGCC uh, generation reduction, then it might cause the um, coal generation increasement or something. Uh, we don't see a, uh, I, I haven't checked the detail of the generation yet, but I guess the some, some, some uh, replacement of generation happened. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes, may I ask a question? Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Yamada, for your very interesting uh, presentation. Sorry, I joined from the middle. I was also attending others. Um, excuse me if you mentioned this earlier in your presentation, but I just wanted to have your personal insight on um, whether it is more worth it to focus on the industry or on the residential demand uh, of electricity. And um, maybe another question is, as you know, also in Japan, uh, by 2030, there is a target of um, basically implementing the home energy management systems, the HEMS, uh, to all the households. So how great of an impact do you think this can have on the uh, residential uh, aspect of uh, energy consumption? Thank you very much. Thank you for your question. And um, I think the, uh, for the demand response uh, 
technology uh, and it needs the uh, communications and sensors and and, and order and, and some co uh, computing servers etc so uh, it needs you know, it costs uh, some part uh, for the uh, demand response so uh, i think it is easier to uh, start uh, from um, large demand. So uh, I started with uh, this research from uh, industry sectors. And, uh, when I communicate with the uh, foreign uh, the TSOs or ISOs, they uh, also uh, included the big part of uh, uh, a big, a large size demand, uh, demand response uh, at the start. So for, so for now in Japan, uh, uh, such as uh, energy pool, uh, uh, start the uh, industry uh, size demand response uh, as a trial. So uh, for the uh, residential demand response, uh, it it's, uh, takes some time and, and it needs more uh, cost reduction of the for the sensing and communications and uh, handling many uh, resources in the same time. And that is for uh, algorithmic aspects. So uh, it might be difficult to, to uh, utilize the residential demand response in, in 2030, but in the more future uh, with more uh, technology uh, advancement, we, we, we hope uh, the uh, residential demand response as well. Thank you very much for your answer. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you, Dr. Yamada. So let's move to the next speaker, the Dr. Do Hyu Che. Can you share your slide? Oh. Um, please, uh, Dr. Yamada, can you just uh, shut down your slides so the next speaker can share? Sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. So can you see the slide now? Yes. Okay. Um, may I start? Yes, please. Uh, yeah. Um, good morning or good afternoon to based on where you are. Um, I'm Donghyun Choi, and today um, I'll talk about the topic uh, unpacking the driving forces of historical electricity generation cost change in Korea. Um, the market forces versus technology change. Um, so this work has been done by uh, me and Dr. Om um and Dr. Cho at KAIST. So um, let's start with the um, background, the policy background in Korea. So similar to many other countries around the world, Korea is also pursuing um, toward low carbon and um, clean energy system. And this is uh, formalized in ninth BPLE, the basic plan for long-term electricity supply and demand um, published by government. So um, I saw the previous Japan's case, they, they also had 2030 um, solar and wind target and Korea's target seems much ambitious, which uh, shows that um, the renewable generations in 2030 will be 20% of the total electricity supply. So this is quite uh, ambitious, but uh, when we are thinking about other side, we still have 80% um, of electricity or more than 70% of electricity are still generated by conventional sources, such as coal, gas, and nuclear. So, um, so 
when we are thinking about energy transitions toward the renewable energy, we cannot um, ignore the cost of transitions. And um, to decarbonize the energy system, we have two alternatives. So first one can be replacing the coal to gas, uh, which is less carbon intensive, but still uh, it can increase the volatility of cost because um, the fuel import price of the gas uh, is much volatile compared to the coal. And when we are thinking about expanding the renewable, uh, it is still costly up to now, but it still have another side of benefit, which increase the energy self-sufficiency. And this is especially important for Korea case because um, Korea is highly depending on fuel import and Korea has um, pretty low energy self-sufficiency. So uh, we are expecting expanding renewable might have another side of benefits. So the research question we have is first, uh, whether the renewable electricity generation will likely to become cost comparative by 2030. And to answer this question, the follow-up question is how technology learning and market uncertainties affect the future electricity generation cost? And what are the enabling policy or technology or market conditions that can accelerate or promote this energy transitions? So to answer these research questions, uh, we have uh, some uh, basic method. So what we um, did is we try to find some uh, electricity cost trends, the LCOE cost trends uh, from the historical data. And we try to filter out um, some trends and uncertainties in there. So when we are thinking about the cost change trend, uh, we can think about technology learning, uh, which say the accumulations of experience or accumulations of installations uh, leads to decreasing costs in the long run. But still we have many uncertain factors such as um, fuel import price that is um, uncontrollable and that is quite um, exogenous. Uh, so we try to uh, split and filter out these two factors and try to um, estimate or propagate how uh, electricity price will change in the future. So um, relevant literature reviews, uh, first of all, um, all of you might be familiar with the concept of uh, LCOE, the levelized cost of electricity. It is a very um, um, simple method that can compare the different technology in the same manner. So fuel cost, OM cost, and capital cost are added and converted in the same unit, the dollar per kilowatt hour unit. So it can easily compare the cost comparativeness of each technology. So um, many of the uh, literature already has done um, historical LCOE analysis. Um, like they have collected decades of empirical plant level cost data and try to find out how LCOE has changed over time. And some study uh, has focused on construction costs, how construction costs of for instance, nuclear power plant has changed over time. And there's another stream of uh, research, um, stochastic LCOE, uh, which tried to reflect uncertainty in market factors such as fuel price or uncertainty in policy factors such as carbon price. And in the case of nuclear power, there, there is some uncertainty in construction durations um, due to um, some regulation issues and also um, some uncertainties in renewable generations. These kind of issues has been covered by stochastic LCO literatures. So um, our contributions on this stream is uh, we also had uh, stochastic LCO projections, but we try to make this projection based on historical data. Uh, rather than uh, having assumptions in the distributions. 
And also we try to uh, draw some implications from cross-technology comparison in the context of energy transition. So um, as I mentioned, um, we are um, anal we have analyzed the historical um, data and um, we our benefit, our kind of strong point in this study is we have extensive plant level data uh, for our analysis. So as you can see in the table uh, for the conventional core power plant, combined cycle gas turbine, nuclear power plant, we have more than 90% uh, of the coverage. So uh, the plant in operations are mostly covered in our data set in terms of um, construction cost data. And even uh, also for the solar and wind power, um, we focus on commercial scale uh, for solar, uh, which is more, a lot larger than a hundred kilowatt scale and for wind, uh, larger than one megawatt scale. And uh, for, in the case of wind power, we still cover 87% of the wind turbine in Korea. Uh, and also uh, for solar, uh, the percentage is relatively low, but data point is still uh, about, a, about 200. So we try to make it a representative case uh, of the uh, situations in Korea. And the sources are various. Uh, so we uh, acquire some data from trade associations in Korea to uh, have cost data on fuel import price and um, energy system or CAPCO, the uh, utility farm in Korea, KPX Korea Power Exchange, and some uh, market data from BNEF, the Bloomberg uh, New Energy Finance. So here's our analysis part. So uh, based on the data we collected, uh, we analyze how LCOE has changed over time. And um, as you can see, there are some fluctuations, but uh, if we see the 2017, uh, we can see the nuclear power LCOE has, the, has been lowest and followed by poor gas, solar, and wind. And um, we can see that uh, solar, which is marked as the yellow line and wind, the blue line, they had uh, been decreased a lot. Their LCOA has decreased uh, rapidly, but still um, they are um, costly compared to core or nuclear power. And when we are looking at volatility of the LCOA, um, nuclear LCO is stable while that of fossil fuel based technologies are quite volatile because we import uh, fossil fuel. And uh, LCOE, or, um, the, another interesting point we find is the volatility of gas turbine um, LCOE was even larger than the, that of wind. So if we, uh, we have kind of some kind of bias that uh, renewable power generation cost is quite volatile, but in reality, uh, the cost volatility of wind was um, even large, even smaller than gas. And here are some sources of volatility. What, what factors that drive this volatility? So as mentioned, um, you can see in the graph A, uh, you can clearly see coal and gas, and especially gas has high volatility due to fuel import price. And in the graph B, you can see that um, gas turbine has the largest, um, largest volatility in terms of OMM cost, the operations and management cost. And um, this is because of the policy factors, the electricity market uh, characteristic, because gas turbine is working as a peak load. So um, their generation is highly depend on market situations. So that drives the volatility and capacity factor and also the OM, OM cost. And interestingly, nuclear power also have large volatility in OM cost. Um, and this is uh, 
caused by increase in maintenance due to enhanced safety regulations and more periodic um, safety checkup that reduce the capacity factor. Um, and in terms of um, capital costs, the mature technologies like core gas and nuclear, they are um, already stable in terms of construction costs, but renewables, they are um, relatively volatile because they are um, still um, emerging technologies or still growing technology. So to deeply understand how um, capital cost change has been done, we uh, further analyze technology learning of each technology. Um, and we derive the learning rate based on construction costs and accumulate capacity. And interestingly, we find that um, conventional technologies in the long run, they have negative learning, uh, which means the construction cost has uh, slightly increased over time. So as you can see in the table, core has minus 2.23%, gas has minus 6.7%. So um, the conventional technology is experiencing slight cost increase, but solar uh, definitely have um, large learning rate. And we could not find um, explicit trend in the wind case. Um, in terms of uh, unit construction cost in average, um, gas turbine was the uh, cheapest one, uh, while solar was still expensive one. So based on our historical data analysis, we uh, try to uh, project what will the landscape economic landscape of this technology will be in 2030. So to um, make the 2030 cost projections, we have uh, some probability distributions derived from historical data. So uh, we first categorized uh, the LCOE cost component into market factor, technology factor, and policy factor. And for the market factor, we uh, give probability distributions to fuel import price and capacity factors based on historical data. And for technology factor, the learning rate has been applied, which uh, we just saw in the previous slide. Uh, and still, uh, learning rate itself is not something that is 100% for sure. So we also add uh, some uh, distributions here based on the variance we have in the historical data. And for the carbon price, uh, we, uh, Korea also already have a nationwide emission trading scheme. So we uh, collect the emission trading scheme uh, permit price and drive the distributions uh, of the carbon price. And we also uh, use Monte Carlo simulations for 2030 LCOE distributions. So it's, this is because stochastic, we are um, calculating stochastic LCOE. And uh, we made pairwise comparison of 10,000 simulations for each sample of uh, parameters. And we also derived the concept called cost reversal probability. So what this is, uh, this a CRP concept reveals the probability of one technologies become cheaper than the other technologies. So the reason why we introduced this concept is like uh, since uh, electricity market is based on economic dispatch, it is uh, meaningless to compare the average. So we introduced this concept to see when and like how often one technology is become cheaper than another so that they can replace one another. So uh, we first uh, have 2017 LCO distributions in the graph. Uh, uh, the CRP of core and gas, uh, for instance, uh, means that the LCO of gas has 18.8% chance of becoming cheaper than that of core. So, um, 
This is how we interpret CRP. And when we move to 2030 LCOE distributions, um, you can see on the graph A, uh, which um, again shows that nuclear power uh, is uh, still lowest and followed by four. And a change here is solar became cheaper than gas turbine because of the learning rate and followed by gas and wind. Wind still remained um, less cost comparative. So in 2030 LCO distributions, uh, when we are thinking about CRP of port solar, so solar have 20.7% chance of becoming cheaper than core, uh, which means still core is uh, more cost comparative in this sense. So, if we adopt uh, carbon pricing, you can see the change in the graph B, which shows that um, solar and even wind become relatively cheaper than coal and gas because coal and gas now has a carbon price within them. So they have a much higher LCOE. So now um, solar has 85.2% chances of becoming cheaper than core. And wind also have 77.6% chances of becoming cheaper than core. So these um, two graphs clearly shows that um, we uh, need carbon pricing uh, to accelerate these transitions. And Another um, alternative to reduce carbon intensity of energy system is to consider core to gas switching. So currently um, gas turbine uh, capacity factor as mentioned earlier is quite volatile and uh, it is relatively low compared to base load generators. So in 2017, the capacity factor of uh, gas turbine was 48% which is a red dotted line in the graph. And core power plant capacity factor was 85%. So uh, if we have in 2030, if we have carbon price and if we have, uh, if we increase the capacity factor of gas turbine uh, to 52 or 53%, uh, we can make gas turbine more economic than core power. And this can, uh, uh, this can be the way uh, to reduce dependency on core. So, uh, and increasing this uh, small amount of capacity factor of gas is not um, technically infeasible. So this can be another direction uh, to, uh, to accelerate the um, energy transitions. So this is my last slide, uh, some key takeaways. Uh, first, based on our historical um, data analysis, we can see that uh, the change in LCOE of fossil fuel-based power, such as coal and gas, they has been accounted for mainly by uh, shifting in fuel import price. And for the nuclear power, the main driver uh, of the LCOE change was ON and cost. And if we don't have any policy interventions on the table, then uh, the core power plants will remain cost comparative even in 2030. So carbon pricing is uh, pivotal to accelerate the nationwide um, low carbon energy transitions. And transition away from fossil fuel based power generation can uh, decrease the reliance on um, imported fuel, which also reduced the risk coming from a global energy market. So uh, increasing renewable sources uh, not only uh, reduce the carbon emissions, but also increase the nation's uh, energy security. Um, our study also had some limitations as well. Um, we did not consider the potential multivariate relationship between cost parameters and 
um, additional system level cost of renewables arising from the intermittency, uh, which might which um, might need some um, energy system modeling. Um, so future uh, research would investigate the contributions of this compounding effects and how they affect the LCOE or another uh, measure to uh, calculate the electricity generation cost. So this is all I prepare and thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you very much, the Dr. Cho. So now you can ask some questions. Do you have any questions? Hello, uh, can I ask a question? Oh, please. Um, thank you for your interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I have a question on the uh, wind technology uh, in slide eight. Slide eight or seven. So uh, why the uh, wind technology's uh, learning rate is so uh, low rather than the solar in Korea? Yeah, that's a uh, good question. Um, we also discussed within our team about this uh, why we don't have like mature learning rate in the case of wind. And the reason uh, we identify this, um, in Korea, we relatively have comparative um, solar power companies. So like Han Hanwha Q cells or some other companies, they are like um, uh, globally comparative um, solar, like PV manufacturer, but we don't have uh, that kind of um, strong uh, manufacturer in wind turbine. So uh, we um, import wind from like European manufacturers or Chinese manufacturers. So, um, so that's the reason we are guessing about the reason behind. So we don't have like much experience accumulated in wind, but we have some experience accumulated in solar. Thank you. Okay. So I have uh, also have a question in this page. So for the solar power plant, whether you choose the, the some special plant, or the mega power, uh, solar power plant, or just the you choose the all the power plant. Oh yeah, uh, that's a good point. So our solar case is, uh, as you might know, it is hard to uh, measure the how how many numbers of uh, like solar panels are within yeah. Korea. So um, we focus on. Um, commercial scale um, solar, which um, the scale unit is larger than 100 kilowatt unit uh, in terms of like solar project size. And uh, 198 is the data point we have. Yeah. Yeah. And so the learning rate derived is based on this um, about 200 data point. Okay. Before I think maybe this because the size is very different. So maybe it, it will impact on the learning, learning like that. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Yeah. So are there any questions? Uh, Yama, Yamata? Hello? Yeah, uh, I have another question. Okay. So, uh, so regarding the uh, gas turbine uh, LCOE and uh, coal, uh, coal one. And so what what do you think if the uh, uh, the gas turbine should uh, uh, operate uh, the uh, um, Low hours, low operating hours due to the uh, PV penetration or so wind penetration. 
then uh, gas turbine cannot operate in the uh, highest uh, efficiency. So how can we uh, calculate or consider the LCOE of uh, gas turbine in the future? Uh, so if I understand correctly, um, you mean how can we increase the capacity factor of gas turbine? Um, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so what we think is um, currently um, capacity factor of gas turbine is 48% in 2017, uh, which seems a much lower than core power because it is work as a, a peak generator, not base load generator. But uh, what we think is we can, it's, it's not technically infeasible. We can increase the capacity factor of gas turbine uh, uh, to like 52 or 3%. And in the future, uh, not now, but in the future, if we also have carbon pricing, then that can make gas turbine generator more cost comparative compared to, compared to core. So that's our kind of claim. And yeah, this is also the, one of the directions actually um, the current government is um, considering as well. Thank you. Ah, I understand the meaning of the slide. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? It, it's okay. So thank you very much, the, Dr. Choi. So next, let's move to the last uh, presenter. I will do the presentation. So can you see my slide? Yes, we do. Oh, okay. So hello, everyone. My name is Lu Gao from the National Institute for Environmental Studies in Japan. Today, I would like to uh, start my topic about the impact of the assessment of willing to pay on the install and the transmission and capacity of renewable energy resources in Japan. So as you know, the renewable energy is the one method to reduce the carbon emission. And many countries are planning to expand the renewable energy capacity. So therefore, recently, some case study tried to incorporate renewable energy into the energy using model. And uh, they forecast the, the per potential distribution of renewable energy based on the geographical emission, the weather condition. Real few studies think about the user's preference for the renewable energy. For example, if the price is too high, maybe few study a uh, person want to use it. Fortunately, several uh, studies have indicated that users are willing to pay the additional cost of renewable energy due to the increasing public concern about global environment problem. And in the future, the willing to pay maybe have a significant impact on achieving the target of renewable energy. And uh, except the, the renewable energy potential, the another challenge is the transmitting electricity generated in remote areas. <clears throat> Previous study indicated that in the Hokkaido and the Tohoku region of Japan have the large potential for renewable energy. But this potential are limited because of the difficulty in transmitting the power to other regions due to a lack of power grid capacity. So in this study, in order to know how will the willing to pay impact on the transmission and the capacity of renewable energy 
in Japan. We incorporate the willing to pay into the multiple regional optimal generation planning model in Japan over the chain regions up to the 2015. So first, uh, um, let's see the framework for this study. And first part, we build the model about the willing to pay and incorporate into the end using models. And next, we like, uh, I would like to introduce the first part. So at first, uh, we concluded the, the, old, the previous study in Japan about the willing to pay for pr promoting the ruby energy. And uh, the, 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 from the middle, the, the willing to pay value can see the value in different areas is quite different. So uh, in order to find out the impact factor to forecast the, the, the minimum value of willing to pay, we use the meta regression analysis. And we ca uh, compare a lot of model, and we find the which the model which just uh, include uh, the gender and the uh, income is the best one to fit the uh, the observed uh, bit. So in this study, we just use the gender and the income to focus the the, well in, the middle value of willing to pay. And uh, for the we already get the willing to pay value from the questionnaire and uh, we already to ask the people whether you want to pay for a, a particular price for the real energy they can answer the yes or no and uh, if the particular price is increased the percentage of the people who want to pay for the real energy will decrease and this we use the wave distribution to show the relationship and in the last page we have introduced the middle value of will to pay um, will change is that on the, the social economic condition and then and the line the cover will also change so we use the uh, equation three to to show the 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 new line the line two and uh, uh, the on on the new line for the the each willing to pay value we have the the response the acceptability uh, right and the way you the 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 spare the particular willing to pay um value by the number of the person who want to pay for the price and from and for different uh, acceptability right we can get the different value I, and we can get the uh, an uh, a line, a cover. This cover is a to show the, the total value to pay. The next, uh, we use the divided uh, cover incorporated into the NG using model. This model calculates the optimal supply quantity for each type of generator through minimization the total cost. And uh, first, we assume the demand is equal to the supply. And to the supply part, we include uh, a lot of generators such as the nuclear, the oil, and the uh, ruby energies. And um, for in the supply side, we have some uh, 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 some condition. For example, the cost of the potential and uh, capacity. For example, for the ruby energies, we assume the, 
the railway energy cost will lower than the willing to pay. And for the potential, we both can see the, the natural condition and the economic condition. And then for the capacity in order to keep the electricity power system stability, so we assume the efficiency of conversation from when the mm, to electricity was 19 percent and this value will smaller than the reserve capacity of the power system. And in this study, we have the full scenario sighting. For the reference, we uh, we estimate the energy mix without consider the impact of willing to pay. And uh, from the scenario one to three, all the uh, scenario consider the impact of willing to pay. But in the scenario one, the willing to pay is just the use for the real energy. And for the scenario two, the mm, the money is just the use for the transmission line. And for the standard story, the money is both can use for the increase of ruby energy and the transmission there. And we still, we use the half and half for each atom. The next, I will introduce the result for this study. So as far as the, the uh, this figure show the, the total value to pay under the different acceptability rise in the each year. And you can see, for example, in the Hokkaido, the, the total value to pay cover firstly is increased and then is decreased. And we incorporate this cover into the NG using model, and we can uh, evaluate the total value to pay in the in the each areas. And we show uh, uh, the value in different quarter and compare the, the, the figure D and the B, you can see the, 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 the total will to pay is increased from the um, 500 to the 1,400 billion N. And this huge in uh, the huge increase for the uh, total willing to pay maybe will improve the uh, uh, is the capacity of renewable energies. So after we uh, evaluate the the diffusion of renewable energy in the 2015, and this figure is showed instilled the renewable energy capacity under the the different uh, scenarios and for in the scenario one the renewable energy capacity is expected to be the 1940 the reference <clears throat> and over the, the 10 regions you can see the the region three is held in all the areas where is contributed by the higher incomes and the one way Compare and in the scenario one, we use all the money for the robot energies, and in the scenario three, we just use the half the money for the robot energies. So you can see the the capacity in the scenario one is um, half half of the uh, us uh, the capacity in the scenario three is half of the scenario one. Well, when we compare the electricity generation from the renewable energy power plant, we can see in the scenario three, the renewable energy generation is uh, more than half of the scenario one. And uh, next, let's see the power transmission capacity in the 2015. And this link area is showed uh, power transmission capacity in each areas. And uh, the, the, the row showed uh, the electricity from, uh, from which 
region to which region for example here is the electricity from the tokyo to the tube so uh for this result we can see in the scenario two and three the increase of global energy transmission capacity is expected to be 9 to 80 fold than the renewable energies and uh, special here you can see from the to uh, tohoku to tokyo and the tube to the tokyo suggestion the great potential for increasing renewable energy transmission capacity in this size and uh, last part i want to do the system analysis uh, for this study so in the um, scenario three before i use the half of the willing to pay for the renewable energies and here we change the share of renewable uh, uh, willing to pay for renewable energy from 10 to 19.5 and the Blue line and uh, the right line is show the renewable energy gener uh, uh, generation in the scenario three. Scenario three is both considered uh, the renewable energy and the transmission line and uh, uh, divided the, the renewable energy generation in the scenario two, which just considered the renewable energy. And for the blue line is the renewable energy uh, capacity in the scenario three divided the renewable energy capacity divided the scenario one. So here you can see the capacity in the scenario three and the scenario one is very similar, but the generation from uh, electricity generation from the renewable energy in the scenario three is the is higher than the scenario one it means the transmission will improve the electricity generation from the renewable energy under the similar re re renewable energy capacity and then this figure show the carbon emission and uh, you can see uh, beside on the share of willing to pay for renewable energy the carbon emission is decreased uh, decreased even under the, the over the 19 percent uh the carbon emission in the scenario three is a little smaller than the scenario one so it means both can see the, the renewable energy and the transmission line has future increase the carbon emission reduction. So finally, let me conclude my topic. The first uh, in present work, the willing to pay function were uh, built yet incorporated into the NGUD model to estimate of the willing to pay impact. The total willing to pay increase from the 500 to the 1,000 400 billion. Yeah. The electricity generation from the en uh, renewable energy and the transmission are with consider the willing to pay as expected to be the 54 and 84 the gender uh, reference scenarios respectively. And both consider the renewable energy and the transmission line can future increase the carbon emission reduction. That's all. Thanks for your attention. So now you we can um, go to the question and the, the comment part. Do you have any question? Nehar, what may yeah. I ask a question? Sorry, yeah. I'm invisible because I don't have a webcam today. Um, okay. um this may be a little technical, uh, but yeah. uh, how did you implement willingness to pay to the model? Um, oh. uh, yeah, would you provide a little detail about the method? Methodology? Oh, okay.
so so for the first part we have already built the 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 total well into pay power and then we incorporate in the the uh, energy using model and here we uh, we assume the first we assume the 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 total cost for the renewable energy uh, will smaller than the total willing to pay and um, uh, we have uh, and then uh, we have another uh, uh, condition is here for the potential is for the renewable energy we both can see uh, the the natural condition is based on the, for example, the, the wind and the, the solar. And then we also consider the, the economic con uh, condition. This one is the acceptability. And uh, for example, if the, uh, because here you can see, we can, The said here, you, you can see the for the, the special, the total we to pay, uh, the, the we are in to pay cost, they have a, a response, the acceptability, uh, right? It means the how many people want to use the renewable energies. Uh, and uh, we divide these two parts to evaluate the potential for the renewable re energies. And, and, and then, um, yes, just, uh, and uh, just in this two part, we consider the real energy uh, about the, the willing to pay. Thank you. So, so are there any questions? So if there have no question, I would like to close this session. So thanks to both the speaker and the audience for providing such an interesting session at discussion. So this session is closed. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation and thank you again for participating in this event. <clears throat> Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.